Well, good morning. Uh, my name is Tim Keogh. I am the CEO of American Incorporated. Um, American uh, was started in 2014 really to address uh, the infrastructure dilemma around cannabis cultivation, processing, primarily focusing on uh, newer markets. But we were able to take a perspective and take a step back from what was occurring in the marketplace, which was the legacy of cannabis cultivation being small scale indoor production. Um, so the company set up in, in real two kind of uh, verticals. The primary focus from a real estate development standpoint has been on the agricultural technology side. So incorporating greenhouse technology, traditional horticultural systems, lean manufacturing systems around designing ground up cannabis cultivation facilities. Um, the second vertical is um, where American is actually applying for a license to be a plant touching entity on the product manufacturing side. So we developed a proprietary efficient way to cultivate products, uh, cultivate cannabis, uh, and we've launched American Brands as our CPG company to extract that biomass, convert it into oil, um, and then manufacture products. Cannabis industry is growing. Um, this is kind of a repetitive slide for this type of conference, but um, you know, as each state brings on their own set of rules and regulations, um, they require their own set of infrastructure, and that's where the, our company, with a real estate focus, um, has uh, built out a, a pretty sizable footprint in the Massachusetts market. So our ag tech technology uh, from the greenhouse, again, leveraging expertise from traditional horticultural experts, lean manufacturing experts. Um, we've designed facilities and we prefer and are focusing on greenfield development, so ground up. Um, all the legacy of cannabis cultivation has been uh, largely indoors, small scale, and then renovating, renovating existing infrastructure. So by utilizing greenhouse, uh, we reduce utility consumptions, and by building ground up, we're able to design the facilities to maximize workflow, um, and that helps reduce labor costs. Uh, reducing labor costs, fewer employees, um, also provides a level of protection for the plants as they're growing. Um, so a lot of automation, a lot of technology, um, but the foundation of it is, is really um, uh, state-of-the-art greenhouse technology. So why greenhouse? Again, we're reducing not only the cost of construction, but the cost of operating these facilities uh, for cultivation um, of cannabis. So cheaper to build, cheaper to operate. And as we look at our competitors, uh, particularly in the Massachusetts market, you know, about 99% of the infrastructure that's being developed is indoor, uh, ranging from 5,000 to 60 or 70,000 square feet um, in initial build outs. Those indoor facilities, you know, can range anywhere from three to $400 a square foot. Cost of production can be anywhere from uh, $1,000 to $1,500 a pound as we compare that against the greenhouse, greenhouse method, you know, we're at $125 a square foot for construction and you know, driving costs down to uh, you know, the gold standard of a you know, dollar a gram or 450 pounds, $450 a pound. So American Brands is a wholly owned subsidiary that we've launched to help uh, meet the needs of the marketplace and really dive into where we believe um, is the most exciting part of the industry right now, which is on the CPG side. So American is applying for a marijuana product manufacturing license in Massachusetts. Um, it's on our fully permitted and approved project that we'll get into later in the presentation. And the focus is on taking the biomass of product that's produced in our greenhouse facilities, so sun-grown cannabis, converting that into oil. Um, so we look at the extraction side of American brands, uh, somewhat like toll processing, but internal toll processing, and that we're, we're processing the, the cannabis and the biomass that's produced on our facility. 
the infrastructure that we're building in Massachusetts will have the capacity to be able to support other farmers in the Massachusetts market um, that are growing. We can take that flour or that trim, process that into oil, and then that gets into um, the second kind of area of the American business model, which is product manufacturing. So within the space that we're developing in Massachusetts, uh, we'll have a bottling line, vape cart filling area, concentrate production, edibles, uh, topicals, and we'll be able to work with our own brands that we develop in-house, but then also partner with other brands from other markets that are looking for an avenue into participating um, in the markets that we set up in. So to kind of dive in, uh, you know, the Massachusetts market, you know, just by way of quick background for me, um, I'm a Massachusetts resident, grew up there, um, got involved in the cannabis industry in 2011 down the Rhode Island market, uh, and quickly identified that what we were doing from a cultivation standpoint, you know, wasn't really scalable. Looking into Massachusetts, uh, was one of the early applicants, secured a license uh, under the medical rules, and the marketplace, from my perspective, is, is arguably one of the best marketplaces uh, in the United States. You know, we've got a very high addressable patient population that's continuing to slowly grow. Um, that has somewhat been stymied by 2016, the passage of adult use. So we've got a, an active medical market, an emerging uh, adult use market, um, you know, but the big story here is there's a lack of infrastructure. So we've got the first two storefronts, uh, I see Rob from Cultivate in the audience here. Hey, Rob. Um, you know, they did $9.3 million in the first four weeks. You know, long lines, limits on products, limits on selection, uh, just a, a very robust level of demand. Um, I believe there's five or six storefronts that are open now. It's the back end of the marketplace in Massachusetts where we're really going to start seeing the supply inefficiencies play out. Um, but a very attractive market, high addressable population. Uh, right now, a slow rollout of a limited number of licenses and the potential to, you know, have a billion dollar, what I believe to be at full maturity, you know, about a $1.8 billion marketplace. But the key to that is someone needs to grow and process $1.8 billion worth of cannabis. So that's the problem. Um, right now, uh, you know, it's kind of a moving target depending on where the state is in awarding licenses, but you know, there's definitely less than a million square feet of total infrastructure that's growing and processing cannabis, getting out into the marketplace. Um, you know, a, a tidal wave of demand, um, and what's happening is prices are high, right? And I know this because you know, we're partnered with Basque, one of the licensed operators in the Commonwealth. We know that cannabis right now is selling on the medical side around $6,400 a pound over the counter. Um, and it gets up to as high as $7,800 a pound retail uh, on the adult use side. Again, limited quantities of consumption, limited selection of products. Um, and all of this is just a function of there's not enough growth space. This is not Colorado where they had five or six million square feet of cultivation infrastructure uh, when, they, when they, they brought on the recreational market. Um, this market really started from, from the ground up and has been uh, slow on the local level, but um, you know, we identified this trend early on and we came up with a solution. So, we acquired and then entered into a ground lease on a ninth, sorry, 52-acre parcel of land. We've master planned it. We've got all of the permits in place. We're permitted for uh, medical. We're permitted for adult use. We've got a host community agreement template in place that doesn't doesn't request any additional compensation from the operators that will set up businesses within the park. Um, yeah, the, the local approval piece in Massachusetts is the greatest bottleneck um, that the market's realizing. Um, and that's driving up some of these costs. And it's not something that's going to evaporate or disintegrate overnight. I think for the next 24 to 36 months, you know, we're really going to see this supply inefficiency um, and the demand will continue to, uh, to increase as existing consumers switch from the illicit market into the regulated marketplace and then new consumers come online. 
Um, so a tremendous amount of opportunity for infrastructure. Um, the first phase, this building is actually under construction right now. Um, we've built this with equity. It's about a seven and a half.